Hello, welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd, and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I have some breaking news coming out from Ukraine to share with you. We're going to talk some more about this ongoing offensive in the Kursk region of Russia. We'll also talk about the Belgorod region as well today. I've got several updates to go over with you. A ton of things have come out over the past 12 to 24 hours that I want to share. Uh, so some of the biggest news that we have here is it looks like the Ukrainians have taken control of up to 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory now. So just in the last 48 hours, last we heard, the Ukrainians were controlling something like somewhere around 540 square kilometers, last I heard, and then all of a sudden it jumped up to 700 square kilometers uh, within like a 12 to 24 hour period later. And this is all in the last couple of days. Now we are hearing uh, from Oleksandr Sersky, the general of Ukraine's army, he was speaking here at this briefing at the Supreme Commander's headquarters in Ukraine, and that's him on the screen there in the background behind Volodymyr Zelensky, and he was briefing uh, Ukraine on an update here, and apparently Ukraine has taken control of 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory now, so this is absolutely huge. Um, we're going to talk some more about that today because this front is opening up and expanding extremely quickly, so I'm sure Vladimir Putin is very worried right now. Also, we've got some updates that Belgorod has been officially invaded, okay? There's reports of heavy fighting uh, happening on the border of Belgorod in one of the cities uh, that just border Russia and Ukraine. So we'll talk about that as we move on today. We also have some big updates coming out from Vladimir Putin um, that I want to discuss as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into the news. I have a ton of things to be sharing with you here on X from independent sources. So this is obviously one of the biggest ones right here from Nexta, Justin. At the moment, the Ukrainian armed forces control about 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory. This was according to Oleksandr Sersky at the Supreme Commander's headquarters. Okay, that was him right there on the screen while he was briefing the Ukrainian army. And Volodymyr Zelensky was here too and letting them know how things are going in the Kursk region. So absolutely insane, guys. I mean, just in the last maybe two days, they have doubled the amount of square kilometer coverage that they have taken uh, from the Russian Russian territory, okay? This is absolutely huge in the Kursk region. I've got several maps now to show you, too, of some of the updates of how much uh, land they're taking, which directions they're starting to move now. And then the, uh, the big uh, news here is, as well is also the Belgorod region, okay? Now that there's a front opening up in Belgorod, I mean, this thing looks like it's going to be inevitable now. Ukraine is really going to be able to push far deep into Russian territory. This is going to put a lot of pressure on Vladimir Putin, and I'm sure he is very, very worried about this. So let's go ahead and move on to our next update here from Nexta again. There are 28 settlements under Ukrainian control in Kursk region, where about 2,000 people live. The situation is complicated, says the deputy governor of the Kursk region. According to him, the depth of penetration of the Ukrainian army into Russia is 12 kilometers, and the width of the front is 40 square kilo or 40 kilometers. Excuse me, is what he said. So there's a, a map of this uh, this front line that's starting to break open right now, and it looks like the Ukrainians are starting to push more east, getting closer to the Belgorod region down here. So we'll talk more about that today. Now, also there was another update here as well from Nexta, because this post here, if you notice, it came out at 5:30 a.m. This morning and then also about two hours ago at the time that I record this so probably about four hours later or so we had another update here as well the Ukrainian Ozenti project deep state claims that 44 localities in the Kursk region are under AFU control control over another 10 settlements is in question according to the analysis our analysts deep state claims to give the most conservative assessment of the situation Earlier, the acting governor of Kursk region, Alexei Smirnov, said at a meeting with Putin that the Ukrainian military controlled 28 settlements in his region. So look at that, 28 settlements, guys. Absolutely huge. I'll show you the video footage of uh, Alexei Smirnov speaking here in just a moment while he's talking to Vladimir Putin. And then I want you guys to see Vladimir Putin's response to it when he starts updating on uh, which settlement, how many settlements have been taken, how much the front has been opening, all those details on square kilometers being taken by the Ukrainians. All right, so let's move on here. From BRICS News, just in, Russian President Putin uh, says there will be no more peace talks with Ukraine. What is there to even talk about with those who attack civilians and nuclear facilities? So he's talking about what's going on in the Kursk region. This was big news that came out today as well. 
So we've got a 30 second video here of Vladimir Putin saying that he's not willing to negotiate with Ukraine any more further. Of the Ukrainians, they're trying to improve their negotiating positions in the future. But what negotiations could we even talk about with people who are attacking civilians, civilian infrastructure, or trying to create threats for nuclear industry facilities? What is there to even talk about with them of the Ukrainians? Okay, so as we can see here, Vladimir Putin no longer willing to negotiate with Ukraine. And we know that if Donald Trump ends up getting into the White House in November, there's most likely going to be a push to end this war. So I would think Russia and Ukraine would have to negotiate. But now this is the major catalyst here that's going to change this, is this new uh, front that's opening up in the Kursk region and now the Belgorod region. So a major war breaking out inside of Russia and Ukraine. So what's going to happen here? Uh, I have no idea what Russia's response is going to be. Are we going to see a major... Uh, devastating response from Russia at some point? Could they potentially use tactical nukes? What's going to happen? I think there's so many things on the table now, especially now that we're hearing that Vladimir Putin is no longer willing to negotiate with Ukraine. Uh, this, this war is going to get very bloody and nasty here over the next few months. And I think we're going to see things throughout this war that we have never seen before. And if you notice as well, Vladimir Putin is mentioning that uh, Ukraine is attacking uh, you know, civilian infrastructure. Obviously, they're trying to go after the nuclear power plant. I think that is a major goal for Ukraine in the uh, Kerchatov uh, or the city of Kerchatov in the Kursk region. So we'll talk some more about that today as well. And if they end up, uh, you know, ca uh, gaining a foothold on the grounds of the nuclear power plant in Kerchatov, that could be huge for Ukraine. So that's kind of what he's talking about here. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about some other things now. I've got this other post from the informant. During a live streamed conference, the governor of Kursk Oblast, Russia, began mentioning that 28 locations were under Ukrainian control and that enemy forces had advanced up to 12 kilometers into Russian territory. This is what we discussed earlier, but I want to show you the video footage now. Visibly uncomfortable, Putin interrupted the governor, stating that they should not release the numbers and it was a military matter. Okay, so he basically, Putin interrupts the governor here, uh, speaking about the you know the 28 settlements that have been taken uh enemy forces moving up to 12 kilometers into russian territory and then look at how he interrupts him and basically says don't talk about that let the military go ahead and announce those uh those updates so take a look Ширина по фронту 40 километров. Ну, это, нам, это, послушайте, Алексей Борисович, это военное да. ведомство вам доложит, какая там ширина и глубина. Вы расскажите нам про социально-экономическую ситуацию и о помощи людям доложите. В настоящее время ситуация в регионе. Okay, so did you catch that right at the very end? Let's see if we can get it. This is what he says. Listen, Alexei, the military department will report to us the width and the depth of how far the Ukrainians are pushing in. And then it says here, you tell us about the socioeconomic situation and report on assistance to the people. Okay, so he did not want him to release these numbers. And he basically doesn't want anybody to know how much, you know, Ukraine is taking, uh, how much of the of the settlements are being taken inside of the Kursk region, how many square kilometers, uh, you know, of land is being taken inside the Kursk region, and also how far in Ukraine is pushing. They don't want that information to be revealed and leave it up to the military and then again if the military releases that information uh you know it's up for people to believe that on how far ukraine is pushing in but based on what we're hearing they are definitely at least 12 uh, kilometers pushed into russian territory and again according to uh general sersky of the ukrainian army he has stated that they have taken 1,000 square kilometers of russian territory in the kursk region alone okay and that's not including belgorod so take a look at this now from Igor Sushko. Breaking, Ukrainian armed forces are storming the Kolotilovka. Uh, it's kind of hard to say. Kolotilovka, border crossing in Belgorod, into Belgorod region at this time, according to the Russian regional government. So um, I did see some video footage of heavy fighting breaking out in the uh, Kolotilovka. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Excuse me if I'm butchering that name. 
But uh, this is in the Belgorod region. It's not far from where Poroz is, okay? Poroz was somewhere in this area as well. So it looks like we've got multiple fronts starting to open up potentially in the Belgorod region. And again, like I said earlier, I saw video footage of heavy fighting breaking out. Um, it looked way too graphic to show you this. It was just uh, definitely something that we could not show here on YouTube. Um, but uh, I'm sure we will get more, more and more footage coming out from the Belgorod region. And I think we were all expecting this. Once I put out that update just the other night of troops in the town of Poroz, which was here on the border as well somewhere. And uh, once we heard that there was a few troops there, I had a feeling we were going to see some sort of offensive breaking out. And according to this information from Igor Sushko, they are starting to push into the Belgorod region now as well. So moving on, Military News UA, a Ukrainian heavy drone of the Baba Yaga type destroys a Russian checkpoint in the Kursk region with drops. So I wanted to share this with you. Uh, this just came out yesterday, but this was some footage probably towards the beginning of the offensive uh, with a heavy drone dropping some bombs here at a Kursk checkpoint. So go ahead and take a look. Alright, so amazing the type of warfare that we see nowadays with drones. I mean, just imagine the landscape of how uh, things have changed on the battlefield with the use of drones. And I've got more video footage showing drones here in just a little bit. Uh, but look at this thing. It carried three, uh, three small explosives there that it dropped on this checkpoint and completely leveled it. Okay, so I uh, just wanted to share that with you. That was some information that was coming out today. So we'll go ahead and move on to our next post here from War Translated Dimitri. Russians shot down a drone aiming uh, aiming to hit them. They had to do it because their EW didn't work. And e EW, if you didn't know what that is, it's Electronic Warfare System. Uh, the Russians have these guns that uh, are, are supposed to be able to disable uh, drones. But I've seen this multiple times, even at uh, oil refineries. Some of the workers there will have these EW weapons, and they'll try to disable the drones that are coming in. And almost every single time I've ever seen them being used, they don't work. So I wanted to show this to you. Uh, 30 seconds, they ended up having to shoot the drone with their rifles just to take it down because their electronic warfare weapon didn't work. So take a look. <laughs> Okay, and also if I didn't mention earlier, these are Russian troops that had to shoot down this drone. So as you can see, they were mentioning there, the uh, EW doesn't work, okay? Their electronic warfare weapons do not work against a lot of these drones. So they had to shoot it down and look at this close call when that thing exploded just on the other side of the vehicle when it started to fall out of the air. So very crazy, guys. wanted to show you that video. I thought that was a very, very cool video to see. At least they were able to shoot it down. But also uh, from Jurgen Nodit, the Biden administration is concerned that Ukraine may face severe retaliation from Russia for the attack by the armed forces of Ukraine on the Kursk region, the Wall Street Journal citing White House sources. According to the publication, American officials fear a massive attack by the Russian Federation on the critical infrastructure of Ukraine in response to the risky operation of Kiev. It should be understood that the Western mass media chase alarming headlines and publishing, publish meaningless insiders. The rocket attacks of the Russian Federation are not revenge for something. They are, for, uh, they are, their, they are their terror tactics, which they would use even if the Ukrainians did not attack. Okay, so that he's probably mentioning that supermarket that got bombed just the other day, right after this offensive got launched. Uh, soon after, within like 24, 48 hour period, that's when the Russians bombed a supermarket on the eastern side of Ukraine. I think it was somewhere in the Donetsk region. Uh, I can't remember the name of the city. It started with a K. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously that's what they're talking about here. But this is something that's being widely discussed on X right now, is that uh, Ukraine is potentially preparing for a major retaliation event from Russia. I mean, they might go after and, and bomb their, you know, more of their... Uh, 
electrical substations throughout the country. Uh, who knows, maybe nuclear power plants, just like we saw yesterday, there was a fire breaking out at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Um, and uh, both sides were blaming each other. Ukraine was blaming Russia, were saying that Russia started a fire there. And I heard they were burning tires inside of one of the cooling towers. And then also we heard that the Russians were saying that it was Ukraine shelling the, you know, the nuclear power plant. So lots of blame being traded back and forth here. And we might start to see some blackmail events and things like that. I'm going to show you some other things that are similar to what we're talking about here. So uh, take a look at this from Tendar. Ukrainian armored vehicles have visually confirmed entered the village of Giri. They are operating unimpe unimpededly between this village and Belitsa. It is the strongest indication so far that the entire area between Sudza and Giri is under Ukrainian control, possibly all the way to Balea. Okay, so look at this, how far... They're stretching out to the east now, okay? This is originally what they were starting to control here, Sudza, when they first moved in. I heard that Guevo just got taken over recently. Now the Ukrainians are starting to stretch and move east or southeast, and it's it's uh, highly indicating that they've got large control of this area as well, okay? So at some point, this will be under Ukrainian control once they're able to cut this off down here. And uh, this is absolutely huge, and this is probably the beginning of what we were starting to hear, that they were taking 1,000 square kilometers. I wouldn't be surprised that Ukraine uh, controls all of this right here. And Balea was one of those towns that was under mandatory evacuation because the Ukrainians were getting extremely close to Balea. They could potentially have control of it right now or very close to having control of Balea. Um, and I also heard, I think I reported last night as well, that uh, Russia was speeding up the evacuation process to get people out of Balea because it was like a very big emergency situation for them, uh, considering how quickly the Ukrainians are advancing, okay? They are taking over territory in Russia very, very quickly compared to what the Russians have been able to do recently, okay? So let's keep moving on. Take a look at this well from Nexta. Zelensky says, Kursk is Putin's finale, the catastrophe of his war. 24 years ago, there was a disaster of Kursk, symbolic beginning of Putin's regime, and now we can see uh, what is the finale for him? It is also Kursk, okay? So what he's referring to, to my understanding, um, I actually shared this with you, we'll go over this here in just a minute, was the Kursk submarine disaster. Uh, it was a major disaster that happened 24 years ago, and uh, you'll, we'll, we'll talk some more about that once we finish this video. But 37 seconds, let's take a look at this update coming out from uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine today. 24 years ago, was Kursk. Символічний початок його правління. А зараз видно, що є фіналом для нього. І теж Курськ. Катастрофа його війни. Так завжди буває з тими, хто зневажає людей та будь-які правила. Росія принесла війну іншим, тепер це повертається додому. Україна завжди хотіла лише миру, і ми обов'язково мир забезпечимо. Я дякую всім кто нам помогает. Слава всем, кто воюет, кто работает заради Украины. Слава Украине. Okay, so basically in this video, what Vladimir Zelensky is doing, he is basically bashing on, uh, Vla or on uh, Vladimir Putin and telling him he should have never launched this war, that uh, you know now it's coming back to haunt them, just like the cursed catastrophe that happened with the submarine 24 years ago. Um, and now it's, it's ending in Kursk again, just like the disaster with the cursed submarine. So yeah, I pulled this up for you guys. I will actually cite this down below if you want to read about this. But it was basically 118 people on board that died in a submarine. There was a torpedo that exploded inside of it, uh, basically caused it to sink. Short story. Um, and, uh, and, and basically, they, they didn't do anything to attempt to try to rescue these people for days. And I believe it said down here something like the uh, Norway and the Brits uh, ended up, you know, Opening the hatchers, it says, to escape the trunk and the boat's flooded ninth compartment but found no survivors. So eventually the Brits and Norwegian divers went down there to try to rescue them, but it was too late. It was like something like a week later or something. Uh, if you guys want to read some more of this, I will cite it down below and share it with you. But I believe that's what he's referring to was the Kursk submarine disaster. Moving on also from current report, Dmitry Medvedev says, Germany dared to send its tanks onto Russian soil. Now they should prepare to face ours. Russian tanks will roll into Republic Square in Berlin, the capital of Germany. Okay, so now we've got Dmitry Medvedev, who is an extreme, uh, you know, hawkish speaker. He comes out like this, talking like this all the time. He's the uh, deputy head of the National Security Council. And basically, uh, 
willing to wage war against Germany because German tanks are rolling into uh, the Kursk region. We had reports just the other day, I've been talking about this, that uh, Germany was saying it was okay for Leopard tanks to enter into the Kursk region. We even had a report yesterday that Polish tanks were heading to the Kursk region. So lots and lots of NATO equipment, heavy armor heading into Kursk. And this is the way that Russia is viewing this, that this is NATO, NATO weapons heading into Russian territory. Okay, so they're basically saying they're willing to wage war on, on NATO, okay, because Germany is obviously a NATO member. So let's keep going. Also from next day, Ukrainian warrior recorded a video from Suza's Central Square. The footage shows that the city remained intact after it came under the control of the AFU, not compared to Ukrainian cities under Russian occupation. So there was a video that was posted here on X as well, showing some troops driving around the city of Suza and showing that it's basically not demolished, okay? We did see some pictures coming out from the Suza region. I don't know if it was Suza exactly, uh, but um, just the other day, like at the beginning towards this operation, there was pictures and video showing destruction of homes and things like that. But inside the central square of Suza, it appears to be for the most part, okay, take a look. Okay, so I think the whole point of this video is to show that when the Ukrainians attack Russia, they don't just level everything, okay? Now, I'm not saying that Ukrainians aren't doing that, but that's what this video was designed to be put out to show that look at the town of Suza, it's still intact, all the homes are still standing, but yet what happens in Ukraine, whenever Russia attacks Ukraine, they level everything, okay? Chasiv Yar is just non-existent, Bakhmut is non-existent, um, you know, there's just multiple regions of Russia that are just completely wiped out and gone, or Ukraine, excuse me, uh, due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And that, you know, kind of comparing that the Russians are much more brutal and just destroy everything in their path versus Ukraine not doing that. So I just wanted to share that with you. I thought that was interesting. Also from Bliskovka, the Russian special services may stage crimes against civilians in the Kursk region to blame Ukraine. Uh, the Secret Service of Ukraine says... A security service, excuse me, uh, such attempts are futile and will have no impact on the offensive actions of the Ukrainian armed forces or the opinion of our country's international partners. Okay, so there's a lot of big news coming out too, saying that there could be blackmail happening uh, on the Ukrainians. Maybe the Russian special services might stage crimes and say like, oh, you know, uh, you know, civilians are being impacted in this way or the Ukrainians are doing this, the civilians are torturing them, they're doing this, they're doing that. That's kind of the information that's coming out that I understand from this, uh, that the Ukrainians are looking out for that, that there could be blackmail reports on the Ukrainians doing things that they shouldn't be doing to try to halt the offensive or whatever it might be. So I wanted to share that with you in case we see any information coming out from that here very soon. I thought that was good information. Also, let's take a look at this. This happened last night. Lots of reports inside of Russia. The uh, Chaklovsky Air base under attack by Ukraine, 19 miles northeast of the Kremlin. Uh, this was uh, over near Moscow, actually. The Chaklovsky Air Base coming under attack by drones. We've actually got video footage here coming up. Now, I will say this video is just basically black. You'll see a few lights, um, and that's about it. But we can hear lots of gunfire in the background. It says right here, Igor Sushko, Russia, Ukrainian drone attack on Chaklovsky Air Base in the Moscow suburb of uh, Shelkovo, Shelkovo, ongoing tonight, heavy air defense activity. So just take a look. It's mostly sound uh, more than anything, but I wanted to share this with you guys. So take a look at this. So we can clearly hear you. You can see a few uh, lights back there, um, but we ma we mainly hear gunfire trying to take down these drones it was obviously a very massive drone attack targeting yet again another uh air base or uh airfield so i wanted to share that with you because i thought that was huge because we've been seeing this happening so much lately there was the morozovsk airfield there was the lipetsk airfield uh ukraine is at the same time trying to target all these airfields that are going to be used to support the Russian troops on the ground in the Kursk region and Belgorod. So while Ukrainian troops are pushing into Kursk and Belgorod at the same time, on the back end, they're striking all these airfields. So that way, 
the you know they can't use their aircraft their su-34 fighter bombers whatever they use to drop these glide bombs or anything like that they're putting pressure on these airfields so that way they can't back up their troops in the region of kursk and belgorod so very smart what the ukrainians are doing here and they're they're so far very successful at doing that striking these airfields because we've been reporting that a lot lately too all right so a couple more things here to share with you from Nexta, the acting head of Kursk region, Alexei Smirnov, said that Ukraine had allegedly used chemical weapons. He also complained about the fact that sabotage groups with Russian documents operate in the region. There are sabotage groups operating in our clothes and cars with our documents, so we are intensifying patrolling. According to him, a brigade of Russian energy company came under fire in the Belovo district of Kursk region. The shells were allegedly with chemical weapons. So here comes all the reports already. Now, I'm not saying these aren't real. Who knows what's really going on over here? But uh, the deputy governor here of this region also coming out and saying that Ukraine is using chemical weapons in the Kursk region as they push in. And there appears to be sabotage events going on as well. So take a look at this as also. Brigado Rossitye восстановить электроснабжение в Беловском районе попало под обстрел, причем снаряды были с химическим оружием, укрылись в РОВД, все живы, но отравление было. Бригаду Россетей. Okay, so this is absolutely huge. I mean, chemical weapons, obviously, as far as I know, chemical weapons are banned uh, for wars, for war use. So uh, were they using it? Were they not using it? I can't completely verify that as of yet, but according to the deputy governor of the Kursk region, he did come out and state this, that Ukraine is using chemical weapons, and then along with that, sabotage groups, as I said, operating in our clothes and cars with our documents, so we we're intensifying patrolling. So absolute panic, craziness going on inside of Russia right now, and uh, they are fighting very hard to contain the situation, but it is spreading uncontrollably like a wildfire right now. So uh, this is getting crazy very quick, guys. So finally, I want to show you one last thing before we get you guys out of here. Uh, from Azov South, the number of FABs or FABs strikes in the Kharkiv region has decreased. Previously, there were 30 to 60 strikes per day. Now there are less than 10 strikes. This happened thanks to the actions of the armed forces of Ukraine and Kursk. Okay, so obviously all the attention is being directed in the Kursk region right now, right? And we, we did an update just uh, yesterday, I think, or the day before talking about uh, many troops being pulled from the eastern side of Ukraine, southern side of Ukraine, and all these annexed regions. The Russians are starting to send them over to the Kursk region, ground troops to fight back against the Ukrainians on the ground. And also, now all of their, you know, all, all their fighter bombers, uh, Russian warplanes are now focused on the Kursk region as well. So it's pulling attention away from these original targets like Kharkiv. Uh, remember, you know, just a few months back, Kharkiv was under attack almost every day. We were consistently reporting this. Now we're not really hearing of any attacks anymore. I think there was one attack the other day in Kharkiv, um, and we also heard of a few attacks down in the Donetsk region. But for the most part, it has been relatively quiet over the last four or five days since this operation began. So, yeah, lots of big updates coming out here from the Kursk region, and I'm sure we'll be hearing much more coming out from Belgorod here very soon as well, now that a new front is starting to open up there. So I just wanted to share some of these details here with you today, give you some of the latest updates. But again, one of the biggest things here is, is that the fact that Ukraine has expanded controlled Russian territory to 1,000 square kilometers. That's absolutely huge, just in the Kursk region alone, okay? And uh, Russia is going to have a very hard time taking this back. And we'll, let's see what they do, okay? We might see some sort of crazy response coming out from Russia here very soon. But you guys let me know what you think down below. Share your thoughts, concerns, and opinions down in the comment section. That's going to be it for this update. If you got something out of this, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that, I hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.